Ang kwecho. Please be seated. The court is now in session, and again, uh, we'd like to hand the floor to the international co-prosecutor to put the further questions to this witness. Do you have the floor, the co-prosecutor? Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Mr. Witness. Sir, this morning you told us that there were no pagotas operating in Tramcat during the DK period. Was there a pagoda in Lebo? And what was that being used for when you lived in Lebo? No. Well, let me see if I can refresh your recollection. A witness testified, a civil party spoke before this court on the 27th of January, and the ERN for this is, the transcript is E1 slash 253.1. In English, it's 0106.0969. In Khmer, it is 010-629-999. And at 9.44 in the morning, Ms. Chu Koman said that in the DK period, the pagoda in Le Bo was turned into a place for keeping children's children. The prisoners were also kept in that pagoda in Lebo Pagoda. She said, so the pagoda became the prison. Sir, you told us that there were no pagodas operating in Lebo, in the Tram Kok district. Why was that? Why was it that during the DK period, there were no pagodas in operation? I didn't see pagoda used as a prison or as a dining hall. Sir, my question is, thank you for that. My question is why pagodas weren't being used as places of Buddhist worship? Why weren't monks at the pagodas and ceremonies performed there? What was the policy that made it so that there were no pagodas? However, when I arrived in Lebo, there were no monks and the pagoda was not used as a place for Buddhist worship at all. But it did not uh, turn into a prison or anything like that. Sir, you're a highly educated man. You told us you were given assignments of responsibility, meeting foreign guests leading work projects, leading workers to work projects. Why was, what was the Khmer Rouge policy towards the Buddhist religion? What did you hear and observe? I did not know anything about that. Well, sir, you attended meetings of district committees in Ko and Dai and in Tram Kap in sectors 108 and 105. Is that correct? I attended the meetings in my capacity as an assistant. Did you ever hear Khmer Rouge cadres speaking about the policy towards religion? No. 
No, I did not hear anything about it from 1975 to 1978. Now, sir, by the way, are you a practicing Buddhist? Yes, I am a Buddhist. Did you practice your religion during the DK period? Pratiquez-vous le culte bouddhique pendant la période du Kampuchea démocratique? During Réponse. the DK period, pendant le Kampuchea démocratique, there was no place of worship. Nulle part, hein, However, at uh, my house, Mais, I maison, actually pray. Je pouvais prier. I paid my respects to je priais, je Buddha Tetu. La statue de Bouddha. L'accusation. So you were allowed to Donc, keep a Buddha statue in your house. De garder une statue du Bouddha à l'intérieur de votre maison. Is that right? Is that exact? Réponse. President, uh, Mr. Witness, please uh, wait until the microphone is uh, operational. Witness, there was no Buddha statue. I just prayed. Your prayers must have been answered because you survived. So let me move on to a different subject. Sir, you said that you led workers during the DK period in various work projects. Those people that were doing the actual labor, were they there voluntarily? As for my and female youth at the website of Digging Canal or Building Dams, they worked at their own will. They were not forced to do so. So it's your testimony that they could decline a work assignment with no consequences. Is that correct? There was no male or female youth who refused to work. However, there were cases where they fell ill, that is, uh, they, they had fever, and then they could rest without having to work. And sometimes they were sent to hospital for treatment. By the way, did your wife have a position at the hospital? Votre femme travaillait-elle à l'hôpital? No, she did not. During the DK period, your wife, Tamok's younger sister, what assignments did she have? She did not have any position. She stayed at home, at her own home to uh, take care of her mother, de sa mère. and uh, that was at uh, Takao province, Takeo, and only occasionally I went to visit uh, her mother, that is my mother-in-law. Was she a member of the Communist Party of Kampuchea, your wife, Tamok's sister? Est-ce que votre femme était membre du Kampuchea Democratic? I do not know, but it seems that she was not a member. In District 105, Tramcock, when you lived at Le Bo, you attended monthly meetings of the district committee where members of the communes, heads of the communes, reported. Is that correct? It 
in the meetings held at the district, dans les commune de chiefs had to report to the district committee. district. Sir, in Lebo, uh, I want to read something for to you again from the same book I read this morning, E3, 1593, Kiernan, the English ERN, 0067, 8587, in Kamai, 0063-7634, and I do not have the French. It's stated that the author wrote, in 19... 77, new cadres took over Le Beau and called separate meetings for each category. They instructed the deportees to temper themselves. Then they formed the three categories into separate cooperatives. The full rights people stayed in Le Beau and were called Kong number one. I'm skipping a bit. Deportees and candidates were assigned to different cooperatives called Kong number 6, 7, and 8. They were moved to another area within Lebo sub-district. Is that correct, Mr. Witness, that people were put into different cooperatives and lived in different areas in Lebo according to categories? Although I lived in Liebo, I did not know the details about uh, the various uh, work groups of people. As I stated, I mainly worked uh, in the rice fields or at the work sites of meeting dams or digging canals. Well, sir, were you assigned to one of these units, these Kongs, or were you at too high a position? to be assigned to such a unit. Est-ce que votre position était-elle trop élevée pour pouvoir être assigné à l'un de ces camps? I did not have any position to supervise any unit and I did not have any position that was senior than what I stated. And I already informed you that the MOC had me transfer to Tramco District to be an assistant to the district committee in dealing with the rice fields and with building dams and digging canals. That is in short to assist them in the uh, work at the work site. Excuse me, I thought you were assigned to Tramcop to meet foreign guests, and that the assistant to the district committee was your assignment at Coende. Are you confused about that, or did I get it wrong? wrong? No, I'm not confused. The work uh, dealing with the foreign gas happened only occasionally. You said you met two delegations that you recall, a Swedish delegation and a Chinese delegation. Were those the only delegations you met? Yes, they were the only two uh, delegations that I made. Were you present for the visit of American journalists to Lebo, including a woman, in December 1978? No, I did not meet them. Were you in Lebo throughout December 1978? Or were you somewhere else? I was in Lebo 
until December 1978. Approximately when did you leave? Question. Quand avez-vous quitté Lego? Let me let me withdraw that. Let me ask the question again. Is it correct you stayed up until the time that the Vietnamese invaded? Jusqu'au moment de l'invasion des Vietnamiens. Jusqu'à l'arrivée des Vietnamiens sur le territoire du Cambodge démocratique. Now, sir, why was it that the Khmer Rouge took these important foreign delegations to Labo? Et amener ces importantes délégations étrangères à Labo. I did not know. Réponse, je n'en savais rien. What exactly were your instructions Question. about what to show or tell them? Quelles étaient exactement vos instructions que vous, vous a-t-on dit de leur dire ou de leur montrer? The sector gave me instruction to show them the le cooperative, the de dining hall in particular of the Libo cooperative, de la cooperative and de about the school for the children to the south, de les and pour les enfants au sud. as for the Chinese delegation, I had to show the rice fields to the east of the cooperative. A les à de la cooperative. In your statement, this would be the um, first statement you gave, the first day, E319.1.15. In answer 53, you're talking about the foreign guests. You said cars from Phnom Penh brought the foreign guests to my place, and I went to meet them. Then I took them to show them model homes and model rice fields that were built for single families. Sir, who lived in these model homes for single families? I cannot recall it. However, the houses were distributed to the peasants living in Libo village. And in fact, that village was called Phnom Rolle village. Sir, the house that you lived in, how did you get that house? Was that assigned to you? Yes, I was, it was given to me. Réponse, oui, on me By who? Question, par qui? The houses were built by Réponse. the commune. C'est la commune qui construisait les maisons. And then they were assigned to a people Ensuite, and I was one of the people who was assigned uh, a house. It was to the north of the cooperative and also to the north of National Road number 5. So you were living in one of the houses built during the decay period, correct? Do I understand you correctly? My house was Réponse. not a model house because the, the model houses were, were taller and they were, were built on poles. Okay, now please answer my question. Was your house built during the DK period?
the house was built uh, when I was transferred to Liebo and it was around probably October uh, 1977. Who was assigned to build your house? À qui a-t-on confié la charge de you construire know? votre maison? Le savez-vous? I already responded to your question. The houses were built by the commune, but I could not tell you which person built the house. Let me move on. Sir, there's documents on our case file about Labo being a model cooperative or model village, including the July 1977 issue of Revolutionary Flag. That's E3-135. First of all, sir, have you heard of this, the Revolutionary Flag publication? Have you seen those? Yes, I used to see uh, to see them, that is the uh, oui. revolutionary flag uh, magazine. Where would you see them, sir? Question. Et où les voyez-vous? Ces numéros du journal. Mon cœur ne ne sera pas. I saw them Réponse. at the uh, cooperative. Je les voyais à la coopérative. As uh, they were distributed by the commune. Ils étaient distribués par la commune. What kinds of people were were given or given access to the revolutionary flag? Can you tell us? Was it only the very highest, or was it distributed to all the cadre and all of those working in the commune? There weren't too many copies of the magazines. They were uh, distributed only to uh, certain people, that is, uh, to those people who live under the commune, and they were not distributed to uh, workers or peasants. Would the persons in authority the commune chiefs, the commune committees, the village committees have access, given access to revolutionary flag. Yes, they did. And what about the security personnel? Did they have access to revolutionary flag? I did not know. Sir, so in this July 1977 issue, if the English URN is 0040 0064 the following two pages, and in French, 0048 in the following three pages, there's a description of an award being given to Lebo, and to, excuse me, to Tramcock as a model district. And it says in the third paragraph on the next page of the ERM, it should be in English 00446851. I'm skipping ahead to shorten things a bit. But in that third paragraph, it says, comrades, you are models in terms of the stance of socialist revolution, doing the work of socialist revolution well, waging class struggle mightily and profoundly, especially inside the party, in all of your districts. Did you, sir, do you believe that's an accurate description of Tramcock District, the time you lived there, that it was a model in terms of the socialist revolution and in waging class struggle mightily and profoundly? 
socialiste et qu'elle s'adonnait à la lutte des classes en profondeur et en douceur. On this matter, I did not know. Je ne savais rien. However, that assessment was not at the time that I went to leave in 1977. I believe that assessment was made by the government of the DK in 1975 or 1976. And uh, that assessment was probably focused on the uh, agricultural product because the land in that district was rich for uh, agricultural production and that is my personal understanding, although I could not speak for the opinion of the government at the time. Just since you mentioned agriculture, did Tramcock District, when you were there and doing working on, you said among other things, you, I believe you said it was rice growing. Did Tramcock District send rice to the center? to Phnom Penh. At Phnom Penh. I cannot recall that. Sir, what I just read you, there is a phrase I'd like your uh, help with understanding. It talks about, in that paragraph I just read you, waging class struggle mightily and profoundly, especially inside the party. And this is, to answer your question about the timing of this, this again is from July 1977, a month after you moved to Trump Cup, that this magazine was published. Can you help us? What does it mean that in Tramcock, class struggle was waged mightily inside the party. I came to Tramcock District in June 1977. However, upon my arrival, I was uh, injured on my left knee, so I had to be hospitalized for three months. And on the issue of uh, waging a class struggle, uh, I could not make such a comment on this issue because that assessment was made by the upper echelon. You were in hospital for three months with a knee injury? President, uh, please wait, Mr. Witness, and here the phone is, uh, the microphone is operational. Witness. Yes, I had a wound on my left knee and not on my ribs. From playing football, correct? Question, c'était parce que vous aviez joué au football, c'est cela? No, in fact, it's a. Réponse. In fact, it was a volleyball, and Réponse. when I en fait, fell foot, down, then I had an injury on my Et knee. Lorsque je suis tombé, je me suis blessé au genou. L'accusation. Okay, Thank you. When you Je met this Chinese delegation, you said Rong gave you, if I'm correct, gave you that assignment. Did Rong, Tamok, or other Khmer Rouge cadre discuss with you the importance of the trip and China's importance as the ally, the most important ally of the Khmer Rouge?
spoke to me, but he did not speak to me on the matters that you just raised. I would like to read to you from um, a book that was just recently placed on the case file. And it's E342. And in that book, the author wrote, Perhaps no single, it's called Brothers in Arms, Chinese Aid to the Khmer Rouge, 1975 to 79. And the author wrote that perhaps no single individual in China better symbolized the concept of self-reliance than the head of the famous Dazai model commune, Cheng Yonggui. And my pronunciation of Chinese is as bad as my Khmer, so, uh, that's how I would pronounce it. Chen's extended visit to Cambodia in December 1977 underscored the legitimacy of the CPK's own rhetoric of self-sufficient development. His trip was also meant to shore up evidence to strengthen his position at home and was apparently perceived by the Khmer Rouge leadership as a last, best, and, ultimate, and ultimately unsuccessful chance to help strengthen the waning leftist line in China that was threatened by the reemergence of Deng Xiaoping and the Reform Coalition. Paul the President, uh, please hold on, Mr. Co-Prosecutor, um, Counsel, you may proceed. Merci. Je voudrais que Monsieur le Procureur nous Thank indique you. si E3, suivi like d'un chiffre, est le titre de son livre, e et si c'est également le nom de l'auteur. Et si ce n'est pas le cas, qu'il nous dise uh, is, quel est le nom de l'auteur de ce livre, quel est son And titre, not, et par quelle décision est-il autorisé à se author, servir de ce document aujourd'hui Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, the title, the author of the book Merci. is Andrew Murtha, M-E-R-T-H-A, and I don't authorize myself. Uh, this was a decision from the trial chamber E342 admitting this book into uh, putting it on the case file. It was just published in 2014. Ce livre vient d'être publié en 2014. So E342 is the decision of the Et la décision de la chambre bench of the trial chamber. E so, sir, I was reading that Paul Pot himself hosted Donc, Chen and personally Paul took Paul him all over Cambodia, where Chinese official, where, excuse me, the Chinese official, met with the constellation of DK officials including zone leaders like Kepok, Sao Pim, and Tamok. Military commanders like Neas Mut and Tuch Min, and a number of local DK cadres. And then I skip a sentence. While there, the embodiment of Dazai visited the Lebo model commune, which boasted 9,000 families over 4,000 hectares. So, sir, were you aware that Paul Pot accompanied this important guest from China 
Witness, please hold on. Mr. Council, you may proceed. Merci. Sous le contrôle de la Chambre, je crois que la cote E342 correspond à la demande de l'équipe des procureurs, mais certainement pas à une décision qui a été rendue par votre Chambre autorisant l'utilisation de ce livre. C'est la raison pour laquelle, si c'est bien le cas, nous nous opposons à ce que M. le procureur utilise. Prosecution's use of that book. My understanding is that the book, to clarify, I think my error. May, may I just ask a question to the prosecution to clarify? La juge Fens, um, puis-je poser une question à l'accusation? Is, is it correct that this was filed today, the request? I mean, I know we have discussed the book, but the request was filed when? The request was filed on the 3rd of March. Le 3 mars. And uh, my understanding is that the document has been given the number E342.1.
The President Shech Loen, you may proceed. Uh, could you please ask to the co-prosecutor for clarification? Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Yes, Monsieur thank you, Mr. President. Nous, uh, nous avons effectivement yes, uh, vérifié, nous sommes saisis d'une requête we have e checked and found that we have of a motion E342, which was filed on the 3rd of March, March and on the 9th of March, française. we have uh, the French version si thereof. The Chamber is of the view uh, that ce, if you wish to use that application and the document it concerns, that is the book of uh, Mr. Andrew Mehta, either you would have to make an oral application, des, des which will be discussed décision, by the parties today, and then we will rule on it, votre, or uh, you proceed to so à, another à subject sujet. in your examination. Thank you, Judge LeBurn. Because I'm short of time, I'm going to Merci, move on to another document. And that is E3-1339. Mr. Witness, this is a report from the Phnom Penh Domestic Service. It indicates, and the ERNs, well, it's only a, well, I'll give the ERNs in English. 001683350-51. In Khmer, it's 01063905-07. And in French, I'm oh, sorry, I don't have the French. In the first sentence, it indicates on the morning of 13 December, Comrade Cheng Yongkui and other Chinese comrades, accompanied by Comrades Pol Pot, Secretary of the KCP Central Committee, and Prime Minister Ng Sari, Bon Vet, and Chun Chun, Chun Chun left Kampong Som town to visit the southwest region. Skipping to the last paragraph, on that page, on the morning of 14 December, Comrade Cheng Yangkui and other Chinese comrades left the Keo town for Phnom Penh, accompanied by our Comrade Party Secretary and Comrades Ng Sari, Born Vet, and Chun Chun. A large crowd lined the streets of Takeo. And then on the next page, on their way to Phnom Penh, the Chinese comrades stopped to participate in a mass meeting at the Leibo Cooperative. So, sir, did you see the upper echelon of the Khmer Rouge, Paul Pot? Ing Sari, Born Vet, with the Chinese guest in his visit to Leibo in December 1977. Answer. I saw only Chinese delegation, but I didn't see Pol Pot and Ng Sari. I saw only those who accompanied them. Those who accompanied them was from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the people who lined the street to receive the delegation, I didn't see those people who lined uh, on the street. Sir, did, before the guests arrived, were ordinary workers given instructions or were efforts made to make the commune appear particularly clean? Answer. Réponse. We were receiving Chinese delegation in Nous a casual manner 
including cooking rice and soup at the uh, cooperative kitchen for them. Um, and we did not organize any big ceremony. Nous it was a kind of ordinary um, management and uh, cooking for them. Let me go back to E3, 1593, page 191 and 192 of Kiernan's book. In English, the ERN is 0067590 states that around the end of 1977, a group of Europeans and Chinese came to visit the model cooperative in Tram Kok. Sarun's mobile unit was laboring nearby. He recalls that the night before the workers were informed they would stop. Next day, at 10 a.m., to get a new set of clothes each and then proceed to the communal mess hall. Quote, anyone who fought over the food would be withdrawn, and indicates use the Khmer word do sen, which, according to the author, usually means executions, because the foreigners were coming to photograph. Sir, is that true? The president, uh, please hold on, Mr. Witness. Mr. Kong Samon, you may proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I have no objection because the co-prosecutor indicated ERN in English, but he failed to uh, mention ERN in Khmer. Please. It's fair enough, and I don't have it, so we'll look it up, and I'll move on for a moment. Excuse me. The ERN in Khmer is 00637488 to 490. And just going on a little bit, At 10 a.m., they all left the work site, washed their oxen and plows, and then bathed. Anyone who wasn't washed clean would be withdrawn. And it says that Saroon has two vivid memories of this visit. For the first time in years, he saw European faces, three bearded, two with long hair and the other bald. And also, one of us ate so much he fell over backwards and was taken to hospital and never came back. Do you recall before the Swedes, Swedish journalists visited that instructions that new clothes were handed out? Answer. There was nothing strange. Uh, they would wear the same uh, dress, the same uniform. There was no arrangement for that reception. Mr. Witness, in your view, was Lebo a typical commune in Democratic Kampuchea? And sir, I cannot make assessment on this, but uh, Tamok uh, sent me to stay and work there. I had to follow his uh, instruction. Uh, it was not uh, more than other places, as I can uh, say. Uh, there was a model house, there was a dining hall, there was a school building in front, and the rice paddy on both uh, to the east and to the west. That's all uh, about this cooperative. And sir, what about District 105, Trump Cup? In your experience, you said you were in District 108 and some other places. Was Tramcock typical 
of Khmer Rouge policies around the country, as far as you could tell. And so, to my opinion, I think it was normal. Pour moi, tout était normal là-bas. But it received from the upper echelon as a model district. I uh, take it to the word of the upper echelon, but to myself, I think it was a simple or ordinary cooperative uh, uh, district, rather. Sir, you've discussed the positions that you held or the fact that you say you held no position in Koandai in, sec in Sector 108, District 108, and in Tramcock, District 105. Just so that we're absolutely clear, were you ever on a district committee anywhere in Cambodia during the DK regime? Answer, no, I didn't. No. I was simply the assistant at on that district and also an assistant to the committee of Trump Cock uh, Committee, uh, district committee. District committee members, especially the head of the district committee, would have his own or her own messengers assigned. Is that correct? Answer, Réponse. the district committee assigned one messenger for them who would accompany him or her to different places, messager, especially when they travel from one place to another, they would be accompanied by one messenger at a time. Let me make sure, uh, perhaps you didn't understand my question. So did the district committee chairman have messengers during the DK regime in the districts you were at? More. Did he have one messenger at, or one or more messengers? Un messager ou plus d'ailleurs. And so, there were not many. Uh, most of them, there were one or two messengers who 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 work as a uh, bodyguard and who who was called messenger. And who did they report to? The district messengers. Who was their boss? District messengers were with the district committee. They did not report to anyone. All they had to do was to accompany the district secretary uh, when they moved around. That's all. Sir, did you have messengers assigned? Answer, no, I don't non. have, I didn't have. So I'd like you to look at your statement from the 28th of January, E319.1.15. And look at what answer 30 that you gave at that time. under the section investigators' comments. It indicates we showed a photograph identifying Wat Aang Sri Milai Pagoda, Wat Samplai Pagoda, to the witness. 
And then it says you said that you used to travel to that area once in a while during the Khmer Rouge regime. But if I visited the area again, people probably would not recognize me. And then, Mr. Witness, you said this. Listen carefully. You told the investigators, I went there to look after the workplace for my messengers, the district messengers, to see how they were living. So, sir, if you were never on a district committee, why did you have messengers, district messengers, that you called your messengers? Answer. This is my mistake in response because Lok Ta Sien and Ta Chan assigned me to look and to supervise their messengers in terms of um, food supplies to see if they were adequate. So uh, at uh, Simply Pagoda. They were the messengers for Ta Sien and Ta Chan. Those messengers were tasked with circulating letters from the commune to the district and from the district from Ta Chan and to Ta Sien to different communes. This is my uh, mistake in giving this um, a response. In fact, they were the messengers of Ta Sien and Ta Chan. Well, sir, was it a mistake because you revealed the fact that, in fact, you really did have messengers because you were the district committee chairman in Trump Cup? And, sir, I had no messenger. I was living in my house to the south of the uh, Lebo cooperative. I had no messenger at all. Sir, during your, the DK regime, did you make enemies? Are there people who you believe are out to get you because of something you did to them? I did not have any enemy during the decay period. Also in District 108, I did not have any enemy. I lived with the workers at the work sites, in the rice fields. I slept with them, sometimes in the same mosquito net with the youth working the work sites for digging canals in the boat. So I can say that I had no enemy at the time. And when I went to Tram Court District, I also had no enemy there. So there's no reason for anyone to lie about your positions in Koan Date and in Tram Cop District. Is that right? I did not have any position. And as I said, I was an assistant to the district committee dealing with the construction of building dams, of dams and canals, and working in the rice fields. Your Honor, this would be an appropriate time to break. President, you may continue for a little while. Very well. Sir, do you know Im Cham? Yes, I knew her during oui, the regime. Is there any reason for her to lie about you? Question: Has-t-elle des raisons de mentir à votre sujet? I can say her recollection 
is not uh, that precise. Okay, Mr. Witness, um, let's see. Imcham spoke to DC Cam, document E305 slash 13.23.330. And in English, the ERN is 00951845. It's page 21 and 22. And in Khmer, it's ERN 00929827. And the interviewer, viewer, Danny, asked her, why she was transferred to Koh Andai. Was the committee in Koh Andai removed? She said there were frequent conflicts among the committee. When I arrived there, the, the chairman was transferred to Kiribong. Danny asked her who was in charge of Koh Andai at the time. She gave her answer. And then he said, was Sieng transferred to Kiravong. She said yes. And she said yes. Then there were three people. A male member, my deputy, was Tom Mok's younger brother-in-law, and me. And Danny asked who? She said, grandfather's son, Tom Mok's younger brother-in-law. Later in that interview, at uh, two pages further on, she said, I was at the rear line focusing on rice cultivating, while Uncle San, my deputy, was in charge of Bong District near the Vietnamese territory. Sir, you were Im Cham's deputy in Koh and Dai. Isn't that true? Donc vous étiez responsable à Kowandai. No. Réponse I non. was not uh, Ye Jam's deputy. Je n'étais pas l'adjoint. And she's de correct Ye that you were in Bong Jam. near the Vietnamese border. Isn't that correct? Isn't that true? Début de l'intervention inaudible car canal occupé. I went to work at Prey at Thung Lik in Bang District, which was located near the uh, Cambodian Vietnamese border. So she's correct about that. Now, is that right? You were in Bong. I'll go on with another question. Sir, my colleague earlier this morning read to you the statement of another witness to come, TCW 809, who was a secretary in District 105 before you and said that you were the secretary of District 108 in Koen Dai. That's E34628, my colleague read this morning. But I want to go on now to Lei Bo and talk about what people have said about your time in Tramcock District. In D2326, D232-86, English 004247294. Zero zero four one eight four three four to three five French zero zero four three six nine two two a man who said he was a brick maker in Lebo said Later on, I was sent to work at the district workshop near district committee Ta San in Lebo commune. I made bricks, which were taken by the Khmer Rouge to build model dining halls in the cooperative. Sir, let me read a few more before I ask for your comments so you can respond to all of these. Witness TCW 815, 
document E3-4627, English 0022-3473-4, to Kamai 0016-3490-91, and French 0065-12-56-57. He was asked where he was when Phnom Penh fell. He said, I was here both before it fell and after it fell. They called it District 105, Sector 13, Southwest Zone. My position was youth chairman. Then skipping down a few lines, he said, Takiev was the district secretary, and female comrade Kom, the daughter of Tamok, Later, Kom became the wife of Tamut. He was asked, after Kiev and Kom, who held the position? He answered, after 75, Kom followed her husband to Kampong Som, and Ta Chim rose to replace her for a short time. Later, Ta Kit rose to replace him. He was asked, in the district, and he answered, si right here at Tram Kap, and later, Ta San, the younger brother-in-law of Ta Mok, came to govern all the way until it fell. Question, do you know of what year Ta San came? Answer, approximately 1977, but I'm not clear. Mr. Witness, do you know Ye Bon? Bon? Yes, I know Ye Boon. She was in Tramcock with the same time you were, correct? She lived in Tramcock district while I was there. Document E319-12.3.2. At answer 28, she said, the last Tramcock District Committee was Tassan. For me, I also worked at Tramcock District Committee with Tassan in October 1978, when I was in charge of the woman's side. Tassan had been Tramcock District Committee long before me. And then TCW 948. In document E319.1.17, at answer 10, this is a witness who was the chief of the Sre Renong commune in 1978. And in answer number 10 and answer 31, he identified you as the district secretary and said that he reported every month to you about political works, economy, and security. Do you want me to read more, Mr. Witness? Will you please tell us, admit you were the district secretary of Trump in 1977 and 1978? Can you save me time of reading more? Can you admit that, sir? No, I was not the district secretary, as I repeatedly told you that. I dealt mainly with uh, at the work size. One them was built from Ploilo to the Pian Dag, which was more than 10 kilometers long. And another one came from Reit or Slatku, where the water gate was installed, and then it went uh, crossing Liebo uh, further down, and the length uh, was more than 30 kilometers. Struck the witness to answer the question only. He's giving a speech unrelated. President, thank you. And uh, Mr. Witness, please uh, respond, respond briefly 
through the question oh, put to you and don't make any unnecessary uh, comments or make your response which is not related to the question posed to you. Otherwise, it just leads to many, many more questions for you. And uh, it is now convenient for a short break. We will take a break now and return at 3 o'clock to resume our proceedings. And court officer, please assist the witness during this short break and have him return with his duty counsel at 3 o'clock this afternoon. The court is now in recess.